get to the NFC West. San Francisco 49ers. On paper now, after what they just did, it doesn't look that bad, right? Like a year ago, we're like, hey, they need pass rushers. Solved. Mm-hmm. Hey, they need corners and all that stuff. They didn't make moves, but they sort progressed of. there. They they deserve kudos because all offseason, people were saying they need to go after corners hard. And they spend the entire offseason saying, we are confident in the young players on this roster. We think they will develop and be better this year. Plus Richard Sherman. And they were right. They all were. of those guys improved this season. They, they were right. Jimmy Ward, you know, he opens a hole at safety. He's coming off a career year heading into free agency. Could always add more depth on the interior of the O-line, wide receiver. But now, Kyle Shanahan's got them humming. They mm-hmm. feel him pretty good. But you can't, you can't get into the situation. This was the Bears a couple years ago. This was the Jags a couple years ago. These teams coming off good years where you just look across the roster and it's like, I don't see a lot of holes. This is a solid roster. Although yeah. The Titans have been like this the last couple of years. You have to continue attack to attack at the valuable positions. I would go back to the corner well and, and look for more players there. I mean, at the very minimum, Richie Sherman's not getting any younger. Like he's right. going to reach a, oh, no, a problem at some point. He's going to call you out for that. I know, yeah. Um, Emmanuel Sanders is free agent. He made a notable difference to the offense when he came on. So you need to either re-sign him or replace that. Um, yeah, I, I think those are the two spots, corner and, and receiver. Let's move to the Seattle Seahawks. This is great. Several offensive linemen. Mm. is what we said here. So the Russell Wilson has time in the pocket. Yeah, all of the time they need offensive linemen because they're not good. They're uh, not good. They also he, really shouldn't re-sign Jermaine Effetti, who people keep thinking that's like a thing they should do. No. He's like... Um, not good. Donovan Smith. Yeah, bad. In Tampa Bay. It's like four years of bad. Right. But some improvement. Yeah, I'll Smith. sign up to that again. Voluntarily. What? No. Like if you, you get... You drafted him, right? That was an error in judgment and you're paying for it. When you get a chance to get out from under it, don't compound it by doing it again for more money. Like, what the hell? That's ridiculous. So don't re-sign him. Maybe draft his replacement, who will be cheaper and probably better. I got to go back and run the numbers on this, but I do think, like, they had a Dwayne Brown a couple years ago, and that did make a, make a huge difference, just like Laramie Tunsil made a huge Monster difference with difference. the Texans. I think you can creep back toward average with one guy, if he's that much better. Like, if you're going from George Fant... Yes. Or Julian Davenport, mm-hmm. guys who are some of the worst left tackle play we've ever seen, and you get a top ten pass protector, needle move. You're, you've immediately gone from one of the worst to at least middle of the pack. Dwayne Brown kind of did that for them a couple years ago, but he's been banged up, and you know the rest of the line is has been pretty poor. So the line is always a, a concern. I also think defensively, they just have not had that same pass rush that they had during their great run. No, I think I agree. That that's definitely a spot they. They lost a huge amount, particularly when Cliff a- Cliff Averill yeah. l- w- disappeared or that pure departed. speed rusher. Right, he in particular, the guy that could just get consistent pressure every single game, w- is it was a huge loss. They never replaced that. When when Frank Clark was their third best pass rusher, when he was their number three, I mean that's that's what that's what the Niners are doing right now. Right, is having that you know four and five deep getting after the quarterback. So I think that's another place where. Seattle needs to continue to attack a cornerback again. And others, I know uh, Shaquille Griffin had the nice season and all that stuff, mm-hmm. but he's kind of been up and down and so far in his him, career. There is nothing. So. And opposite him has been nothing. So I think corner has also just been a huge issue there. Those are some key spots for yeah. Seattle. The numbers suggest they were much closer to a 500 team than their record would They really, I mean, Russell Wilson is the reason they were halfway decent this season. Without him having an MVP caliber season, Ooh, the they MVP caliber. would have sucked. you saying he's better than Lamar? Is that what you're trying? I'm saying I would have given him MVP. Los Angeles Rams. O-linemen? Their, their roster's in a tough, in a weird spot right now because they've got no first-round picks for the next 10 years. Huh. The Rams. That feels like a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But they need quite a lot. The O line is bad. Just disappeared this year. It did, though. It Complete got, regression. It got a bit better late in the year when oh, their no? when their young players started to play. They got forced into playing these guys. Yeah, they injuries. kind of they fell a little bit better. The other thing is, like, what the hell happened to Rob Havenstein? Is he, that is he broken from for now and evermore, or does he come back to being like one of the better right tackles in the NFL? Because that would make a pretty big impact. That's where it's like really tough. Again, from like a team building standpoint. When it's like, all right, right, here's my expectation for this guy based off everything I know, and all of a sudden he, you know, falls off a cliff. I had one of the better players in his position in the year NFL, four, and then he suddenly became one of the worst last year. 
Right. And, and now I have no idea what he is. And he, and he was a guy that we said, look, the scheme's kind of protecting him a little bit. I don't know if you want him on an island pass protecting or anything, but the scheme didn't change. Right. It was the same system. It's not like you put him into a new system where it's like, hey, go pass protect by yourself on an island. There was no earthly explanation for his drop-off, but it was monstrous and crippling. Either way, the offensive line was a big part of Jared Goff's regression, facing the most pressure he saw since his rookie season. Played like it, so that was a big issue. And then we always come back to edge defender. They've always had Aaron Donald. He's all, you know he's going to create havoc on the interior. New they, defensive system. Are they going to rely on their edges a little bit more? They would have the same kind of transformative effect if they found some edge rushers as the 49ers had this year, right? They get so much pressure up the middle because of Aaron Donald, and nobody is there to take advantage of it around the edge. So it diminishes the impact of that pressure because the quarterback can just roll the hell out of there right. and escape. If you have edge rushers that stop that happening, like look at the amount of, like look at the impact that DeForest Buckner's pressure has this year compared to the previous years, right? It's like he, he disrupts the middle and suddenly the quarterback is screwed because Bosa and D Ford or Eric Armstead are coming around the like edge. Someone and, else is winning their And walk. he's got nowhere to go. Yeah. He's just, he's buried. If you got an edge rusher that could do that for Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald would immediately look like the best player in the NFL again, which he is. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, Dante Fowler was a guy that had a bunch of those cleanup sacks. Right. It took so he advantage, had, but it wasn't yeah. because he was necessarily dominating off the edge. He got made to look better by the fact that that happened, but he didn't have the same impact as a Nick Bosa who's winning in and of himself and therefore causing, like, compounding the, the pressure inside. Right. So it's an, an edge defender and linebacker now. Um, even Littleton. before Corey Littleton emerged, it was like, man, linebacker's a really big issue. Then Littleton emerges... He develops really nice, becomes one of the best coverage linebackers in the NFL, but he's a free agent. So mm-hmm. the same two positions we keep saying for the Rams and then that offensive line getting rejuvenated. Also probably draft a quarterback. What? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Jared Goff's very good. Wow. Also, he still doesn't know where the sun rises. That's a problem for me. Why do you, you just always go back to that? I mean, I'm sure he's learned. Has he? Point. Has he? I don't know. We'll call Zach and find out. He hasn't learned how to stop throwing the ball to defenders. Why, what makes you think he's learned where the sun rises? There's reasons for that, Sam. I'm just saying, look, I, I'm, I'm big into the idea that if you don't know something my six-year-old knows, I don't want you starting quarterback for my team. Ever? No. I don't want it. Huh. Don't want it. All if right. Scout can beat you in a general knowledge test, you shouldn't be starting quarterback for an she NFL team. She wouldn't beat him in like the general knowledge test. Wouldn't she? I mean, Scout's pretty sharp. I'll throw Harry in there. Harry's got some some skills now. Just making up new words every day. Four years old. Making them up? But, but watch out. Oh, okay. We're just coming up with words we didn't know we knew. Ah, well, that's, that's different. Yeah. That's fun. All right, let's round it out. NFC West, Arizona Cardinals. Coverage across the board is what we said. I think that's fair. Sure. O-line, um, receiver. Receiver's big. Again, it's like how much... Did the investment last year help this year? Hakeem Butler, red shirt. Andy Isabella, pretty much red shirt. Effectively a red shirt. Yeah. yeah. So, and, you know, Larry Fitzgerald's not getting any younger. So there's a lot you need to, they need receiving help desperately for Kyla Murray, but how much will they be expecting the guys they drafted a year ago to make that receiving help this year? I, I mean, I think there's a reasonable chance they're going to give those guys a chance. I think given the strength of this draft class, you should still at least take one. I think a reason, fair- reasonably high you know, draft pick, plus you run more wide, wide, wide receivers than anybody else, so right. take another one. I think a fair question here, if you're the Cardinals, what's the best path to take? This offense, without great talent, right? I mean, think about how bad their offensive line was for the two years leading up to Cliff Kingsbury taking mm-hmm. over. Josh Rosen and Sam Bradford just getting destroyed. Remember Sam Bradford was taking snaps for the Cardinals in 2018? Poor guy. That was one season ago. Think about how bad that line was. They had no weapons. And they made this offense pretty reasonable yeah. in one year, right? It's also a perfect example of how quarterback and scheme affects the pass blocking. You can make them look better immediately just by changing what you're doing. So if you're the Cardinals or if you're Kingsbury or Steve Kime here, would you say, look, we can stitch this together offensively. Kyler Murray can create some offense. We don't need the best playmakers. Just look at this turnaround we had. We're going to attack all defensively first, build the defense up, and then circle back and replace Fitzgerald in a couple of years and all that stuff. No. I might do that with the offensive line and say that can wait if I get better receivers and the defense and blah, blah, blah. I think you need to give. You have a quarterback who you think is going to be the future and the next great thing. You need to give that guy weapons to succeed with. You can't ask him to go out there with Larry Fitzgerald at 125 years old, 
and then a bunch of guys you don't trust to run routes and say, get it done. That's just harsh. It's unfair. You need to supply that guy with weapons. And if you didn't get them last year, if you swung and missed in the draft, try again. Go but again it, until you have them. Build a defense. The offensive line can wait because we're going to get the ball out of our hands quick. We are going to get separation. The quarterback's going to have somewhere to go with the ball. And if he even can't do that, he can run. But so this, the O-line's okay. We can park that yeah, for a I while. Get that. Yeah, I, I agree with but that. But we need receivers. They might look at the receivers like the Niners looked at their secondary last year and said, all right, just give them that. Give them the second That's what year. I'm saying. Give it, them more it, Isabella. Give them more Hakeem Butler. They might have to. Keyshawn Johnson. You got Christian Kirk. Hmm. I mean, he's a good complimentary guy. Look, I, th- I don't see there's any reason that Andy Isabella couldn't be, you know, a Ted Ginn, Devery Henderson designated deep threat for an offense. But you need yeah. to actually play him that way for that to happen. Something Otherwise, must have been up for him not to be impressing them enough I to just be a guy. I don't know that they know that's what he should be. I thought in Dude, preseason, so many people in preseason. Look, you saw the negatives, but he would just get behind the defense in preseason. Out of you know, slots, um, slot fades, and all that stuff, doesn't feel that tough to incorporate it. I just think there were so many people misreading what he is fundamentally. Put him he was a draft right? prospect. That I it wouldn't shock me if his own team thought the same thing. It's like, why is this guy so bad at all these slot routes we're expecting him to run? Right. It's because he's not a slot receiver. And then the other problem he's is... a Russian pencil. Yes. There's a reasonable chance as well that these concerns I had about him in terms of the draft are real, right? That the guy really struggles dealing with any kind of physicality, press coverage, yeah. contact within uh, yeah, the route. Yeah, we saw that. I and think. at that point, now you're talking about a vertical slot only, which is, I mean, in a way, is a really nice matchup problem to have. But if that's all you can do... Now we start to get into, all right, this is kind of awkward to integrate into the offense. That was like what Philip Dorsett did with the Patriots. Like, if you're the third or fourth guy, right, and every now and again you get behind the defense or run a deep out because people have to respect your speed, it's a nice complimentary piece, yeah. but it's not a good number two. Right, and it's really, it's, it becomes a pain in the ass to, to like incorporate us to a decent part of your offense, right? It's like, right. no, look, we need a guy who's out there every single snap being a difference maker. You are someone we think might be able to be a specific role player, and it's a pain in the ass to create an offense around that so you're just gonna have to take a ticket and wait yeah i'm gonna be real fascinated to see what uh arizona does this offseason mm. the whole rebuild continues there so that'll do it man you want to get rid of me and get back to more great pff youtube content all you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe thanks for watching